Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So um, here I am in London, in uh, the St James's area, which is a very plush area, close to St James's Palace. Anyway, this is the house where um, Sir, Fr Ooh. <laughs> Sir Francis Chichester live, lived um, uh, towards the end of his life. Um, so uh, Chichester, he's best known for uh, sailing all the way around the world on his own. So he's the only one on the yacht. Uh, so when I mean sailing, I really do mean using sails, not engines. Um, so Chisholm was born in 1901 in Sherwell, Devon. So Devon's a, a county in the southwest of England. His father was a was a um, Anglican clergyman. His grandfather was a baronet, as in Sir, Sir Weber Chichester, as it was an inherited uh, thing, not just knighted for his lifetime. But Francis, as his father, was not in not in line to inherit that. Sir Francis Chichester, he got that because he was later knighted for the Queen for his services to sailing. He's, he's got KBE at the end of the name. He's knight, a knight of the Order of the British Empire, even though the British Empire hasn't existed for quite a long time. But when he was knighted, it had existed till only a few years earlier. So um, Chichester, uh, he grew up in a well-off household, well-connected. He wasn't, a, wasn't a, an academic sort. He went to Marlborough College, uh, an independent school, the, the one that uh, Kate Middleton later attended. Um, anyway, he was just too young for the First World War. And uh, he emigrated um, uh, right after the First World War to New Zealand, feeling there were few opportunities left in the United Kingdom, which was uh, just afflicted by the war, hugely in debt with mass unemployment. So there he swiftly built up a, a fantastic business for himself. He made a fortune very young, property wheeler dealering. He owned a mine, he sold timber, various things like that. Then along came the Great Depression and wiped most of it out. Um, but uh, anyway, he still managed to get to get married despite all this. Uh, just, uh, he wasn't really that penniless, but he was not as rich, rich as he had been before. Returned to this country. He got into flying in the 1920s. It was a very new thing, and he called one of his one of his planes a gypsy moth. But flying was very hair raising back then. There were an awful lot of crashes. Safety was rudimentary to say the least. Uh, navigation was by dead reckoning. He improved navigation. So when the Second World War came along, he volunteered with the Royal Air Force, but he was turned down on the grounds of age and ill health. He was 40, quite lucky to be too young for the First World War, but too old for the Second. But nevertheless, the RF let him be a flying instructor at the Central Empire Flying School. I think that's what, in what we've now called Zimbabwe. Um, so uh, then, um, what's, what's, what's uh, the uh, next stop for um, Chichester? So after the war, he took up his hobby of, of, of um, uh, sailing again. And he, he named his um, yachts Gypsy Moth 2, 3, and 4. And um, he had cancer in the mid-60s, um, lung cancer, because he was a heavy smoker. Almost everyone was one that was, because he was, in, he, was in, he was 50 before people realized that smoking caused lung cancer. Even then, when they accepted that smoking was bad for you, they thought it was only a teensy bit bad for you. A bit like saying drinking tea is bad. You say, oh, it's only a little bit bad for you, and that's only if you drink absolutely gallons of it each day. Um, anyway. So then um, uh, Sir Francis, he competed in various races, he went on to, uh, onto a vegetarian diet and he managed to beat cancer. And then uh, famously it was 1966-67 when he sailed all around the globe solo, he wrote a book about it, things that went wrong when huge waves came into the yacht, he thought it was going to capsize or something, but he made it. And a woman, Ellen MacArthur, Dame Ellen MacArthur, the first woman to sail around the, the, the world solo in about 2005. Anyway, really not my bag sailing, incidentally. I'm, I'm a landlubber, I'm afraid. I haven't got my sea legs. But this old salty sea dog, well, he died in 1972. He's buried, buried in the town where he was born. But it was a bit of a race against time for him to actually achieve his dream of being the first person to sail all around the world um, single-handed because um, he knew the cancer could come back and kill him any time. Then a few years later, he did die of it. That is enough about Sir Francis Chichester. Bye.